This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Hello, and welcome to Talking to Spirits with Lightworkers Tim and Justina. It's nice to have you back. And tonight, what we're going to do in this show is we're going to kind of pick up where we left off. In our last show, uh, we had basically been talking to Comets, which is Justina's spirit guide, her main spirit guide. And we were asking a lot of very interesting questions. So we're going to really just continue with that. And we're going to ask about spiritual attachments. That's where we're going to start. Then we're going to move on talking about hauntings, like haunted houses, haunted locations. And then we also work with pets. We help people with their pets uh, solve like behavior problems and, and even physical problems. So we're going to move into that and talk about that. And then we're going to jump into different planes of development. And what we've learned is that spirits and spirit guides, they're not really all on the same playing field. Uh, They're actually in different levels. So let's try to figure what that is. You know, let's figure it out. And if time permits, we're going to then jump into something a little bit different. And Justina and myself were working together, and we were actually able to speak directly with Justina's soul which we, we refer to it as energy light. So that's kind of what we have on tap tonight. And Justina, do you want to say hi to everybody real quick? Yeah, I just want to say welcome back to our listeners and thank all the listeners for tuning in today. Yeah, and what we're going to do if um, you missed the last show is Justina and I, we have this down to a science. So I'm going to have her take a couple of deep breaths in and out. I'm going to count from 10 down to 1, fire in the magical phrase, and what that's going to um, allow Justina to do is go into like a sleep state, the conscious mind, boom, 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 it's it's just gone. And then we're going to ask to speak with her guides. During this process, um, Justina, basically she's gone, she's taken a little nappy napperson. (laughs) And, um, but when we're, when we're done, um, we're going to say the magical word, remember, and then boom, she can remember what took place. So why don't we just jump into it? Uh, Justina, how's that sound? Yep. I'm all ready to go, Tim. Excellent. Okay. Well, it's time to just relax. I'd like you to just close your eyes and take a nice deep, deep breath in. Fill up your lungs really good and exhale that breath. And as you do, just relax. And that's good. And now take another deep, deep breath in. Fill up your lungs really good. Hold on to that breath for a moment. And as you exhale that breath, relax even more. Just become aware of the weight of your body. And as I count from 10 down to 1, with every number I say, you just relax a little more, a little deeper. So let's go ahead and do that now, starting with number 10, 9, 8, drifting down, 7, Six, five, way down, four, three, two, and one. 
yellow elephant. Yellow elephant. And the white protective light comes in, keeping you safe and secure. Yellow elephant. Yellow elephant. And that's good. And you're always listening to me. And now that you're in the perfect place, may I please speak to Justina's spirit guide, please? Yes. Wonderful. And is this Comex? Yes. Thank you very much, Comets, for coming forward again for us. And Comets, we're actually doing another show, just kind of picking up where we left off. And ourselves and our listeners would like to learn some information, if that's okay. The first topic is something that we've worked with a lot, which is spiritual attachments. Now, Comets, is it true that either people who have died and not crossed over or negative energies can and do attach to human beings? Yes. Yeah, that does happen. I've run into that doing my hypnosis work and us working together have run into that many, many times. Let's take a short break and continue on with talking about spiritual attachments. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. How would you like to be able to read other people's minds? Well, the next best thing is here. When you know how to read a person's name, you know how the person thinks, feels, and behaves. Each letter in our name holds a key to unlock our true essence. Our name contains both our gifts and challenges in this lifetime. Nemology Science discovers personality secrets hidden in the placement of the letters of our names, including the first and last impression people remember about us. Sharon shows us how to interpret the arrangement of letters as outlined in her book, Know the Name, Know the Person. Sharon Lynn Wyeth created Nemology Science after 18 years of research and testing her theories and has supported thousands of people around the world in understanding themselves and others better. You'll enjoy Sharon's unique teachings as she shares her system to learn the gifts behind your given birth name. Even if you don't like your birth name, there are jewels in this book. If you're thinking of changing your name, ready to name your child, or wanting to get along better with others, this is the book for you. If you'd like to improve your relationships and change your life for the better, get the book today, Know the Name, Know the Person, or visit www.knowthename.com. That's www.knowthename.com. Take a step back in time and discover old Florida cuisine at Marsh Landing Restaurant in Felsmere, Florida. Enjoy delicacies such as frog legs, gator tail, catfish, and swamp cabbage, or enjoy the more traditional cuisine such as hand-cut Angus steaks, ribs, and seafood. Join us for breakfast with a southern flair featuring sweet potato pancakes, biscuits and gravy, and much more. Planning a party? Marsh Landing's private dining rooms can accommodate groups from 8 to 80 people. While you visit, enjoy the historic pictures, artifacts, and stories that line the walls. Marsh Landing is truly a unique experience. Marsh Landing Restaurant, 44 North Broadway in historic downtown Felsmere. Or visit marshlandingrestaurant.com. Marsh Landing, Old Florida cuisine at its best.
If you're a seeker, don't miss the inspiring book, Shamanic Awakening, Between the Dark and the Daylight. This remarkable work chronicles shamanic counselor and indigenously trained dream decoder Sander Cochran's 35 years of experience with diverse wisdom keepers throughout the Americas. Sandy's initiations across the British Isles, Turkey, Greece, and Egypt, combined with her knowledge of symbology, psychology, and myth, influence her dream blog and workshops. Sandy offers private readings, sacred international journeys, a meditative CD, and her book, Shamanic Awakening, to encourage you as you navigate your earthwalk and create a deeper connection to yourself. Find this and more at her website, starwalkervisions.com. with Lightworkers Tim and Justina. And we have Justina in the state. And Kometz, her main spirit guide, is here. And Kometz, we're talking about spiritual attachments. And you've just told us that people that have passed away but not crossed into the light or negative energies, they actually do attach to human beings. Now, Kometz, does this attachment, does that influence the human? Does that affect the human being in any way? Yes, not in all cases, but in some cases, the negative attachment especially can actually affect the person both emotionally and in their physical body. So yes, it is possible. Now, Kometz, I've noticed with some of the work with attachments that the human being that has died that's attached themselves to a human that's still living a lot of times they don't really want to influence that person but they're more like just using that person as a battery as as like an energy source would that be true that conclusion that i've come up with would that be correct yes so, as you probably call them, when there is an attachment of someone who once lived, the attachment may feed off of the person, but they are not there to harm them. However, if it is a negative entity, the negative entity may try to harm the person, which is a different situation. Yeah, and we'll talk about that in a moment. The one thing I've noticed, and please tell me if I'm right or I'm wrong, is the human that died and then attaches to a living human for that energy. If the deceased person, let's say, was an alcoholic, and let's say their, their knees hurt them, their knees were in pain, the person they're attached to might actually start drinking more alcohol, and their knees actually might start hurting. Is that correct, that, that assumption or the thing that I've seen with that, can, can that happen or does that happen sometimes? Yes, again, not in all cases, but this can happen. But again, and as if as you want to call it a ghost, ghost does not does actually not try to harm, harm the, person, the person, but, but it's, it's just attached to them. So during the attachment, some of the different problems the person had while they were living transfers onto the person that is currently living. Yeah, because I've, I've done some hypnosis work. Actually, a woman comes to mind I worked with a few years ago who came to me for my weight loss program. And then the second session in, she told me that she was drinking a lot of alcohol. That turned out to be a spiritual attachment, which we removed. And from that point forward, she didn't really care about alcohol anymore. It just kind of went away. Now, Comets, does the attachment sometimes intend to cause harm to the human? Correct. Some negative entities try to harm the human, and they feed off the harm and fear they cause to that human when they do these different actions. The times that I've talked to them, they've told me that they've never had a physical body 
and they've never had an identity, like a name. W would that be a correct thing to say? Yes and no. So yes, they have never had an actual identity, but sometimes they will give you a name that they have. But again, it is not like a human name. It was not given to them by their mother or father. It is basically created or they created themselves. So sometimes they may say a name that they go by. But again, they have not lived in a physical body and are not from the same place as humans, obviously. I see. Now, Comets, from where you are, can you see these attachments easily? Yes. So if you were to just look at a human being, would, would it just be obvious? Oh, there's another like energy attached or associated with this person? Yes. Okay. And as a spirit guide, do you sometimes, at least sometimes just step in and remove those? Is, is that something that you do? Yes, especially when they are not very powerful and it is very easy just to step in and tell the negative entity that it needs to go towards the light and cannot bother the person no longer. Okay. Yeah, I've, I've experienced that a lot, obviously, hundreds of times. Now, is that a difficult process for you to do, Comex? In some cases, no. But in some cases, it is much harder to remove the negative entity. And is that based, like, on the power? Like, oh, it's a very powerful entity kind of thing? Is, is that what it is? Correct. Some entities are more powerful and are more attached and want to do more harm. So you can think about it as ones that are easily gone, but other ones would rather stay attached and hurt the person or be here in the earth plane than go back to the light, or some don't even want to go to the light in general. Would it be the people that don't want to go to the light that have passed over, is it that they're scared to, to leave the earth plane or do they fear that they're going to be judged? Or, or is it like on, like on ghost shows that you can see on TV, a lot of times they say, oh, well, they don't know that they died. Um, is it kind of a mix of those or, or is it more of one than another? Usually they do not know that they died. And also sometimes they think they have unfinished business. They have to finish here before crossing over. So they are trying to finish what they need to finish here, but do not understand that they may be harming someone or something in the process instead of just going into the light. I see. Now, for you, Comets, to actually remove one of these by and large, is that a difficult process or, or kind of just easy to do? Mostly easy. Okay. And I know that we've had at least a couple of sessions like this, but I wanted to ask the questions for our listeners. Do you sometimes have to call in, like the big guns, so to speak? Like, do you have to call in the archangels to assist when it's like a strong or rather bad attachment? Yes. When the attachment has never had a physical body, then that is more difficult. And the spiritual attachment for sure does not want to go towards the light since they did not originally go or be from the light. So basically, we have to call in higher-ups, which are usually the archangels and also other angels, which will come down and help with the process to try to get the entity to go into the light. And if you had to do that, Comets, for you, what do you do? Do you just, do you just call, call up and say, hey, can you guys help me out? Or is there a ritual that you have to do to contact these archangels? As we mentioned before, all communication is through energy. So we just basically have the energy, send them a message, that we need their help, and they will come down and help. Again, it varies on the entity, so sometimes we need more backup, and sometimes we need less. Again, we will send for this, and whoever of the angels wants to come down will come down and help us. 
during the process too. It varies the amount of time it takes to get rid of an entity, depending again if the entity had a physical body or if the entity wants to go into the light or how powerful the entity is. So there are many factors at play. Okay. If this in fact is like a negative energy and it's never had a body or an identity, would that be something that human beings would, would kind of call a demon? Would that kind of sum it up? Is, is that correct in saying that? Yes, you could call it a demon. Okay. And when you take them away, do you simply take them into the light and then they, they change and they, they become good? Is it kind of a process like that? Yes, obviously there's more to it, but basically we tell the demon to go into the light and that is where they need to go into. So we try to have the demon see the light. Again, sometimes the demon wants to stay here on the earth and bother people instead of going into the light. And this is where the angels assist, where they actually use their own light to help guide the demon in. But again, sometimes it is a short process, which occurs in a few seconds. But again, sometimes it is a longer process with convincing that the demon needs to go into the light and basically pushing them towards the light and making them see the light. Okay. Now, Comets, do you believe or, or do you think that most human beings during their incarnation will have a spiritual attachment at some point in that lifetime? Yes, at some point. Okay, because I, I was on the internet, and there I don't remember her name, but she was a PhD, and she was a psychotherapist. And according to her, that's what she said. She said, I believe that every human being will have a spiritual attachment at least once in their lifetime. So you would agree with that, that statement? Yes. Okay, now, do these attachments ever simply decide to just leave on their own and just, okay, I'm out of here and I'm, I'm going to go into the light? Once in a while, but it is not very common. Okay, I see. Well, that's interesting because a lot of human beings, they, they either don't believe that there are spiritual attachments or they've never even heard of it. Uh, you know, they they, didn't, they, have, they have no idea that it's even out there. But it actually is out there, and it's out there a whole lot more than what most people might even think. So, and, and when we work with our clients on any particular problem, whether it's an emotional problem or physical problem, as you know, Comets, I always ask, one of the questions is, is, does this have anything to do with an attachment? And I don't know what the percentage is, but um, it definitely does. Uh, it comes up often, actually. Well, thank you very much, Comets. And um, is there any other information or any, you know, I, I just asked a series of questions, but any other information that you would like to tell myself or anyone listening about these spiritual attachments that I haven't really covered? The only other thing we'd like to say is that if someone has, someone has an emotional, emotional problem, problem that seems, that seems to, be to be getting worse, worse in, their life, in their life and is and not is tied not to a life, life event, event and may be attached to a spiritual attachment. So it is important for the guides or obviously a session or something like that to intervene so the person can feel better. Obviously, as spirit guides, we never want to have a spiritual attachment present to someone since the person is suffering and the spiritual attachment also needs to go into the light. Yeah, and through my hypnosis work, I've, I've actually crossed over a lot of either people that have passed away or quote-unquote demons. And with the demons, what I've noticed is I just have them look at the very core of themselves and they notice a speck of light that gets bigger and bigger and bigger and they go from kind of bad and they turn into something that's very nice and friendly.
This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. There's a legend shared by many indigenous cultures of a time when the nations were cast to the four corners of the world. Each nation was given a body of sacred knowledge that held a different portion of the truth to preserve. True reality could not be known until all the nations reunited, combining the information. If a single one was missing, the world could not be reborn and darkness would prevail. The Science of Magic Radio is dedicated to reuniting the sacred knowledge. With the understanding, none of us has all the answers, but together we can open new perceptions and possibilities. Through our combined vision, the world can be reborn into a place where darkness no longer prevails. Join me, Gwilda Wiecka, and the Science of Magic daily on the Exxon Broadcast Network, xzbn.net, or visit us at thescienceofmagic.net. We all desire health, happiness, and fulfillment, but often get in our own way. Repeated patterns that leave us out of control can keep us feeling powerless, frustrated, and unable to move forward in spite of our best efforts. Unconscious patterning disconnects us from our gifts, often destroying the very thing we seek. But there is an answer. We can take charge of our destiny and heal the trauma of our history. Shamanism is an effective ancient modality that can reconnect us with our true selves, empower the creation of our dreams, and return us to health and balance. Cody Alexander is a certified shamanic practitioner and teacher with 11 years experience. Email healingpathways33 at gmail.com or visit codyalexander.net to schedule a long-distance shamanic session today. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. healing must address four levels, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, for us to live joyful and productive lives. We tend to treat three of the four, leaving the spiritual languishing. If you're tired of the same dysfunctional patterns cropping up in your life, soul balancing is for you. Trixie Phelps, owner and founder of Soul Balancing, is a naturally gifted energy healer trained in numerous esoteric forms, including shamanism. Trixie has created a powerful modality that safely and effectively clears your energetic field. A soul balancing session can remove interference, heal trauma, and restore your hope. Contact Trixie for a life-changing long-distance session today, www.soulbalancing.world. to Talking to Spirits with Lightworkers Tim and Justina. And I have Justina in the state, and we're talking to her spirit guide, her main guide, Comets. And we were just talking about spiritual attachments. Now, I'd like to change the topic a little bit. Let's 
if you don't mind, Comets, let's talk about hauntings, like haunted locations. Now, we've done this before, but for our listeners, people listening, working with us, is it possible for us to go ahead and clear a haunted location working together? Yes. And we've done this before. Now, I know that you need to have the person with us in session so we're connected with them. And is it then easy to simply connect to the location kind of through that person and then find out who or what is actually there in this haunted location? Yes, it is very easy. I think. So again, so again, you need to know, need to know some, information some information about, about the location, location. so we can exactly find, out find out where, where the, the which you would probably call a ghost, ghost is. But again, it is very easy to tell the ghost that it can just go into the light since most ghosts are confused because they do not realize they are dead. And again, we are very loving to them and tell them and explain them that they are no longer in this physical world and then guide them up to what most people call heaven to be with their previous loved ones who passed on. Now, comets, upon a person dying, wouldn't their spirit guides come in if they were confused or if they didn't know they died? Wouldn't somebody from the spiritual realm come to them and tell them, hey, you, your physical body has stopped working? Wouldn't that happen or, or no? Yes, but again, when ghosts are present, they're kind of in an in-between. So you can think of it in a world between the physical world and the spirit world. So sometimes the ghosts can actually communicate with their spirit guides and, and the spirit guides cannot communicate with them when they are in this state. Okay. I've, um, through reading books and watching shows and, and such, I've, I've seen a lot of times, or, or near-death experiences, I, that's probably the best example. I've heard that when a person dies, that they're guided into the light, like they see the light, and, and they, they move into the light. Now, these ghosts that are just sticking around in a certain location... Is it that they, they didn't notice the light or the light didn't come to them? So the light was obviously there, but usually ghosts are present after a very traumatic situation. So they are more focused on the situation instead of actually going towards the light. So this adds to the confusion. And after a while, does the light kind of go away for them or is it always there for them? It is still there, but a lot of times they just do not notice it. They are more focused on the physical world that they just left. And I guess that, that kind of goes into my next question. It's like, why are they still here on Earth? I mean, why, why do they hang out? Usually they are confused about their death. So usually it is a traumatic event, but not always. Or they could be very attached to the place that they are at where they are haunting. So the ghost does not realize it is actually dead and is trying to do something in the physical world. This means they may be trying to get back to their former life. They are confused that their surroundings are changing. They're confused by the people that are entering the space or for many different reasons, but there is a lot of confusion surrounding. So sometimes the ghost may even try to interact with the people make noises, do different things because they do not realize that they are not in this physical body and that their physical body is no longer with them. Okay. Now, Comets, you had explained to me that human beings and spirits are different where human beings operate off of emotion and spirits don't. Spirits more operate off of energy. So when one of the when a person dies and becomes a ghost because they don't move into the light and they don't cross over while let's say they're haunting a house are they still in the emotional mind 
and and they haven't moved into the energy. Is, is that kind of how it is? Yes, that is correct. So you've probably heard about ghosts that will cry or be angry or yeah. different emotions. So yes, they still will be experiencing these emotions. Again, this adds to the confusion that they are feeling. And, and another question with this is, let's say they're a ghost, they're haunting a location, so they still have the emotions. I would assume that whatever physical or physical or emotional problems they had in life, they still have until they go into the light. And that's when things change. Would, would that be correct in saying that? Yes, that is correct. Okay. Now, do negative energies ever come in to like, like a house to haunt it simply to disrupt a family or, or to cause harm to a certain family? Yes, sometimes. So, yeah. for example, for example if, if a person, a person in the physical, physical world, world wanted to wanted harm to others, others but, but ended, up ended up becoming a ghost, a ghost they may continue, they may continue harming them. others. Also, some ghosts may not realize that they are affecting people in a negative way. So, a ghost might throw something across the room, and they are just doing this out of the emotions they are feeling in confusion, but are not trying to harm the person. So, there can be good and bad ghosts. Okay. And is there any, besides the questions I've asked, is there any other input or any other information that you'd like to tell myself or, or the listening audience about these hauntings? Not at this time, no. Okay. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, that's a very, obviously, there's a lot of television shows on ghosts and hauntings. And uh, Oh, I do have one other question, Comets. When I watch these ghost hunting shows, they always hunt the ghosts at nighttime, number one, and they always shut off all of the lights. It, I mean, I would think if there's a ghost in a house, that ghost is there in the day and at night. Is that is that wrong? No. So usually ghosts are there all the time, especially when they're when haunting, they're haunting in, a, a in a place or an, or an object. object. So, so the ghost, the ghost is, there is there all the all time, the time haunting. haunting. So no, oh, no, night is not required to actually hunt the ghost. We personally think as guides it is just for dramatic effect to make the viewers feel more into the show and to watch the show more frequently since it is more scary and obviously some people like to get scared. Yeah, and so the, does that go with shutting off all the lights and then they have these special cameras that can see in pitch black? I mean, you don't have to shut off the lights, do you? The only time you'd have to shut off the lights is if you were trying to get an image from an infrared camera for the ghost if it is heating up an area. So yes, for that you would shut off the lights. But in general, no, the lights would not have to be off. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. That that clears that up for at least me. Um, you know, moving away from haunted locations, we've also worked with our clients and their pets. They're animals, cats and dogs, uh, obviously are, are, you know, the standard pets. Um, and you've told us before, comments, that it's actually almost easier to help pets than, than humans. Would that be correct in saying that? Yes. And, and why is that? Pets are more simple than humans. So humans have a lot more thoughts throughout the day and have a lot more going on. Well, pets are more simple-minded. Okay. Now, I already know the, the answer to this, but I'm going to ask it. Do pets have souls? Like when a pet passes away, does it not really die? It just moves into the spirit world as well? Yes, that is correct. Yeah, that's what I thought. And when you talk directly with the pets, when you communicate with them, are you able to communicate with them like you're communicating with me? Is it the same thing? No. So with pets, it's more through feelings and images than direct communication. Since obviously a lot of pets do not know English, so communicating with them like we are talking would not work very well. 
So, so do you like pick up on their energy and 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 you and you see images of things that might have happened with them? Correct. Okay, because I know we've worked on changing behavior of animals and and also physically, you know, like helping them. Um, is it easy to change the behavior of a pet uh, once you determine why they're acting that way? Yes, it is very easy. Because I know we had worked with um, Justina's family dog, Grover, and it was like a world of difference. Uh, I, I remember one of the problems was at nighttime, when, when it was time to relax and start to go to sleep, that's when Grover got all like oh, anxious and jumpity and things like that. And um, if I remember correctly, you had said it's because Grover actually was a stray. And when it became nighttime, that's when he had to get alert to stay safe. And, and I'm, remembering, I'm remembering that correct, aren't I, Comets? Yes. So in Grover's case, his past really dictated his current behavior. So when we communicated with Grover, we had to communicate in a lot any of love, love, love since, since Grover, Grover had, to had to realize that he was in a happy, loving family and would not experience the events that he experienced in his past. Yeah. And, and to communicate with Grover, did you send him pictures of, of a family and being safe at nighttime? Was it kind of like that? Correct, along with the emotions and being loved, being safe, and basically being okay with his family, that his family would not get rid of him, that this was a permanent home for him. Okay, and when you're looking at a pet, uh, I have a dog that was a rescue dog, and Grover was a rescue dog. Is it easy for you to know what happened in their past, to, to kind of track back what happened to them? Yes, it is very easy. So Grover showed us previous images of what he went through in his past. And this basically showed us what events that led to the emotional problems that he had now. Okay, because Grover, according to Justina, is a completely different dog. And there are obviously millions and millions of dogs. Uh, animal lovers out there. I'm one of them. Justina's one of them. Uh, we absolutely love animals. So if anyone listening is having a problem with behavior or physical, we can help with physical problems too, can't we, Comets? Yes. Yeah, so if anyone listening is having any kind of difficulty with your pet, be it behavior problems or physical problems, um, please give us a call. You can contact us through lightworkers.cc and we'd love to help you out. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 
401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. I am Dr. Carl O'Helvey, founder, president of a new cancer foundation focusing on evidence-based physical, mental, and spiritual interventions, including natural cancer cures, prayer, meditation, affirmations, nutrition, and other related holistic cancer prevention and cure modalities. These are used in cancer education, research, and financing care. I ask for your help to continue this important work by donating at www.holisticcancerfoundation.com. Wouldn't you love to know the secret to everything? I'm Dr. Kimberly McGeorge, and on The Secret to Everything, we will merge the practical with open investigation into all realms of the mysterious. We will talk to cutting-edge alternative health practitioners, those who inspire and motivate you in business and life, and of course, we will share stories of the paranormal, conspiracy, and cryptozoology. You will transform because of the frequency I carry, the frequencies my guests carry. Life may never be the same after you listen to this program. For the secret to everything is for you, the listener. For those who desire more in every area of their lives and believe that it can still be found. Listen and discover thesecrettoeverything.com. Little children aren't the only ones afraid of the dark. Millions of soldiers return from war zones with PTSD, anger, frustration, fear, and loneliness, much of which surfaces during the darkness of the night. You have the chance to change the lives of these American heroes. Songs and Stories for Soldiers.us provides free MP3 players for these men and women. With a list of 3 million songs in 16 different styles, 100,000 audiobooks, and 30,000 old-time radio programs, every veteran can find something to soothe and comfort them at no cost. All our players contain an 8-hour audio program designed to help veterans fall asleep. With 1,500 plus vets now participating, it's our goal to deliver 10,000 audio players this year. Go to our website at songsandstoriesforsoldiers.us. Help us help a veteran make it through the night. To Talking to Spirits with Lightworkers Tim and Justina. And I have Justina in the state now. We've been talking with Comets which is Justina's main spirit guide. And we were just discussing spirit attachments, hauntings, and pets. Very, very interesting. And Comets, I'd like to, to shift gears um, to a very important topic, one that really, really interests me. And what that is, is the different planes of development and speaking with you previously, Comets, you had told me a little bit about the development of, of spirits and souls. And I just had a few questions about that. I had found a website. Actually, Justina found it. And uh, I went and looked at it. It was really interesting. And they had level one, level two, level three, and level four basically developmental uh, planes. And Comets, I was hoping you could shed some, some information on this for us. They, they were saying that level one is the earth plane. So that's where humanity is. And they were talking about earth angels. I've never heard of an earth angel before. It, it, have you heard of that, Comets? Are there earth angels down here with human beings? 
So I think that what they're trying to say mm-hmm. is that, is that with, with humans, humans, they do, they do different, different acts, acts of, of kindness. kindness. So, so you can you hear, hear someone, someone call someone else, someone else an, angel an angel when they do an act, act of kindness. So here on the earth, some people do act such as angels. For example, someone may try to save someone's life and risk their own. And this is an act that, for example, someone would call an angel. I see. Okay, that makes sense. Level two, where they what they have at level two are deceased loved ones, people that have passed away, personal spirit guides, and gatekeepers, and visiting spirit guides. So does that does that sound correct, Comets, for the next level up? So yes. Spirit guides and spirits are about the same level since obviously you can communicate to both so people can communicate to deceased loved ones and to their spirit guides. So yes, we would consider them around the same level. Okay. Does visiting spirit guides make any sense or coming into level two plane or or not really? Yes. All spirit guides are around the same level. Again, different spirit guides are higher or lower. But if you're considering the plane, then yes, we are all equal in that sense. Okay. I understand. Now, level three, one level up, they, they, they talk about soul guides and counsel. Does that sound correct? Being the next level up? Could you please explain a little about each? Well, not really. I'm, I'm just looking at a graphic. So they're saying just above spirit guides and just above people that have passed on into the spirit world is something called soul guides. I've never heard of a soul guide. And then they say also a council. Does, does that seem to make sense or, or not really? In the sense that before a person goes into their physical body, they go to a council and decide on their path in life. And Mm -hmm. obviously there are people that are guiding them. Then yes, this would make sense to have them on the same level. So these two could be put together as before a person actually enters the body and is not able to communicate with these after they are actually in their physical body. I see. Okay. So there is actually a council. I've heard of that. But I've heard that when we come back into the spirit world and before we come and reincarnate, we meet with a council. Is is that correct? Is does that happen? Yes, that is correct. Okay. Now above that, they've got the 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 level 4, which is the highest level. And what they have here They have several things. There's like five things. They have ascended masters, angels, archangels, guardian angels, and, of course, God or source. Would that be correct, all those things being at that that highest level? Yes. So, obviously, God or source would be the highest level. But the angels are directly coming from source. So yes, they are also also very very high level. level. All the angels angels are are on their own hierarchy hierarchy as well. But again, this gets very complicated since some angels, let's say they, we don't want to use the word powerful, but they are higher up than other angels. But yes, these are directly connected to source and would be on their own level. I see. Okay, I understand. And Komet, you had told me that you are pretty much at the highest level of spirit guides. So would your next kind of step up be into that level four archangel source area of, of, I guess, the spirit world? Yes and no. Again, once my job as a spirit guide is done, there will be basically a meeting to see what my next job will be 
So Mm -hmm. I may be moving up another level if I do a good job. Otherwise, I will be back as a spirit guide. I see. I see. Well, thank you. Thank you very much uh, for all the insight for this, uh, for this broadcast. We really, really do appreciate it. Um, it's amazing to be able to sit and directly speak with spirit. And we really, really do appreciate it. Thank you very, very much. And now let's bring Justina back. I'd like to have all the consciousness and personality of Justina to once again return to where it belongs. All the consciousness and personality of Justina is now back exactly where it belongs. And as I count from one up to ten, with every number, Justina, you'll just wake up. And with every number, you'll have more and more energy. And at the count of ten... Your eyes will open up, you'll be wide awake and feeling incredibly good. Let's do that now, starting with number one, two, three, rising up, 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 waking up now, four, and five, becoming very aware of your physical body, the sounds have returned, Let's go way up, way, way up, feeling great, number six and seven. Very aware of your physical body. You can take a deep breath in and out. You can stretch. You can move way up now, up, up, up to number eight and nine. And on the next count, eyes open, fully alert, feeling fantastic and good. Let's do that last number with number 10, eyes open, fully alert, and feeling very good. And are you back with us, Justina? Yes, I'm back. Great. Well, we only have a little less than two minutes. You did wonderfully. Uh, Justina is a, she, she's a star. She's just incredible. <laughs> so great job. Thank you. Now, I'm going to try to do this right this time. What do you recall from that session right now? Right now, not anything, to be honest. Okay, and now, let me say the magic word. Remember. Remember, remember, remember. Okay. Yeah, now I remember. I'll remember. All right. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, uh, I kind of messed that up the last time I did that on the show. So, uh, yeah, just for everybody listening, um, that's we kind of work that in. So when we say the magic world, magical word, remember, that brings everything back. So that's great. And that was that was really interesting. I really enjoyed that. Um, I love talking with Comets. You just get a sense on on how advanced Comets is. I mean, do you get that? Do you get that sense, Justina? Yeah. Every time we have any type of session, it's just. The information that comes out is amazing. I mean, he answers any questions we have, and and I'm just surprised, I'm just surprised by, by how much he knows, knows and how he and can how answer he can everything. Answer. Yeah, and and we did a session. Uh, she's she's in our team. Her name's Kate, and you know Kate was talking and wanted to communicate kind of just directly between Comets and Kate. And Kate said, Comets, can you just read my mind for a second? And Comets was like. Sure. And she asked a question, boom, Comets answered, no problem. And I've experienced that a couple of times myself. And it's like, it just makes you scratch your head like, holy cow. <laughs> I mean, there's some stuff going on. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, wow. So anyway, we had, we had a great show. We were able to cover a lot of things. We, we covered spiritual attachments hauntings, how we work with pets. I love, Justina and I both love working with pets. And then spiritual development. So um, we certainly do appreciate everybody tuning in. And um, please track us down. All you have to do is go to lightworkers.cc. You can put yourself in our calendar. We can help you with your pets, your haunted location, with uh, pretty much anything you want. And uh, we really do want you to just contact us and also if anybody would like to come on the show with us feel free to 